Hi everyone, this video I will try my very best to do in English um, as there are people that ask me to do some in English. Now English is not my mother tongue and I have a problem with tenses in Afrikaans. We don't have that many, many tenses anyway. So today I want to share my DNA that I did through my heritage with everybody. Uh, many times in the past, uh, people told me that, yeah, you Boers, you Afrikaners, you, you are a bunch of mixed people. So, <coughs> your DNA, it doesn't matter how your DNA looks, it doesn't change you, it doesn't change who you are, it doesn't change your people, your folk, it doesn't change you and doesn't matter what's in the DNA. It's not the DNA that, um, that tell what you are. It's your culture, it's your language, and um, the traditional things you do. That is what defines you. But it's still interesting to know what, uh, what in your DNA is. Let's dive into this DNA results and let's see how it looks like. First, I want to tell you um, how my family looks like and, and my history. I'm Matthijs Johannes Swart the fourth, and the, if I look at my um, pedigree or at my uh, family tree, I've got Dutch, German, French, and a little pinch of Scottish blood in, in my veins. Now, the, the surnames out of the first four generations in my family tree is the surname Swart, which is from Dutch uh, origin, the surname Rousseau, which is French, the French Huguenots, and Streicher, which is German, Malan, which is French again, Van Ikerk, Dutch, Burger is Northern German, Bota is German, Rabi is German origin from the north, and then Naip, which is Scots, Scottish, and then Krill, which is also originate northern Germany. And we are, or my family, are 338 years already in southern Africa. My children is the, will be the 11th generation. And we also, they, will be, they are also the 11th generation of farmers in, in Africa, in Southern Africa. I'm the 10th generation farmer here in the Overbear region. And we are farming in this region already for 310 years, since 1714. Now, just for interesting sake, the first black tribe, the Kosa, and the chief Rarabe, only crossed the Fish River in the far east of the Cape Colony in 1779. Now the Fish River is just under a thousand kilometers from, from the Overberg. And um, we, the, the farmers farmed here already for 80 years before the, the first Corsa crossed over into the Cape Colony. Um, I said that just because of uh, political parties that claim that the whites stole the land from them, but they were not even here. They were in the far eastern Cape and they were not here. So, as I said, we were farming 80 years before they entered the colony in the far east. Now, <coughs> my... The first Swart, my forefather that came to South Africa, was born in 1646. He was Johannes Swart. He arrived in the Cape of Good Hope 1685 from Horen in West Frisia in the Netherlands. His wife was Margareta Curry, and she came with the three sons a few years later to the Cape Colony and the three sons were Johannes, Nicolaas and Peter. 
Now, Johannes was um, a zikentrooster, which was a, a doctor in those days, and they did not just doctoring people, but also some other jobs as well. So he was in service of the Dutch East Indian Company in Stellenbosch, where he later also bought a farm and also starts to farm. Now his third son, Peter, was born in 1688. And Peter and his older brother, Johannes, became one of the first pioneers in the Overbear region in 1714 after they received grazing rights near Eilenkral. Now Peter, which is my direct descendant, married Sarah de Beuys, which was the who was the daughter of Jean de Beuys and Sarah Jacob of Calais in France. So um, they were French Huguenots. Now I have a pretty impressive uh, Stamboom uh, family tree. Um, there is really just a few names that is not in that family tree yet. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting. Now, I want to share this with you. This is my corner where my, all my family photos is hanging against the wall. And all the generations. You see, there's my, my kids. Me, myself, my father and mother my grandfather and grandmother, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother, my great-great-grandfather and great-grandmother, and my great-great-great-grandmother and grandfather. You see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six generations of pictures that is hanging here. And my grandmother's father and mother, their surname was Streicher. And my mother's father and mother, Rousseau and Malan, was their surnames. And there is Peter Malan, that's uh, my great-grandfather on my mother's side. So, yeah, there's lots of history here. And something very interesting. We are five in a row with, this, with the same name. My son, myself, my father, my grandfather and great-grandfather is the same name, Matthijs Johannes. So I'm the fourth and my son is the fifth, Matthijs Johannes Swart. Now let's go to the results. Now, according to family tree DNA, my male line belong to the Y DNA haplogroup group RM173. Now, RM173 is part of the R1B uh, haplogroup group. And it's very interesting. This is the root. Um, how they end up in Europe many, many thousands of years ago as they, they migrated into Europe. Now, the distribution of R1B in Europe is like this. It's not surprising because, as I said, my family mostly came from the Netherlands, um, Germany and France. So this is the distribution of R1B. And then they said that my empty DNA, mitochondrial DNA, um, belonged to the haplogroup H, which is my female line, my mother's, my, mo my mother's mother and her mother and her mother and so forth. And this is the route as they migrated into Europe. And this is the mtDNA haplogroup H distribution pattern throughout Europe. Again, very heavily in France and also part of South Netherlands and Germany. 
Now, the autosomal DNA results show you where your ancestors come from. Now, your autosomal DNA is both your mother and father's DNA, and it uses the first five generations around the belt um, to, to um, establish or to find where your forefathers came from. Now, very interestingly, um, I'm 100% European, Western European 95%, and this 95 is made up Central European 69%, England, Wales and Scotland 18%, Scandinavia 9%, Southern Europe 5%, Italian Peninsula. So this is very interesting, and then the rest is all zero, zero. Africa, zero, Asia, Middle East, all is zero. In all my whole family tree, for 10 generations, there is not a single Italian surname, nor English surname. There is a, a Scottish, so name Nipe, which is my great grandmother on my mother's side, um, and uh, she was a Nipe. Um, and the Nipes are Scottish, and not Irish. Many Nipes th think they are Irish, but they are actually Scottish. I did my research. So my great grandmother was Margareta Nipe, and her father was Richard Nipe, and he was fifty percent Scottish because his mother was. South African, um, Conradi, and then Richard Knipe, his father was 100% um, Scottish because he came from St. Helena, and his father was um, actually uh, in the time um, of Napoleon Bonaparte when he was in, on exile on St. Helena. That was the time when Richard Knipe lived in. St. Helena Island. Now this is the areas that my genes uh, was put together, all of those areas in different percentages. Now I want to compare some other African surnames just quickly, very quickly, um, with uh, DNA f of Europe as well. So um, this person, I took out the names. So all the the surnames will uh, another person with the same surname will not have the same DNA result. So this is just randomly taken all Afrikaans names with Afrikaans surnames. So Smith, ninety five percent European. What is the rest? Middle Eastern and Northern Africa, four percent. Kutsia, 99% European, 77 Western Europe, 22 Southern Europe, 1% Africa. Actually, it's less than 1%. The next person here is Kellerman, 100% European, 98% Western European, 2% Southern European, 0 Middle Eastern, so and so on. Foster, 99% European, of which is 89% Western European, 6% Southern European, 5% Eastern European, and 1% Middle Eastern. Then this person, Keen, 99% European, 5% Southern European, 1% Asia, Northeast Asia. Jacobs, 99% uh, European, 99 Western European, which is the rest, 1% Africa. Again, it's actually less than 1%, and 1% Asia. The next person, Bota, 99% European, 74 Western, 13 Southern, 11 Eastern, and European Jewish, 1%. This person, Retief, 100% European, 100% Western European. 
Malan, 100% European, 100% Western European. The other person, Bosov, 99% European. So uh, Southern Europe, no, nothing, zero. Eastern European, six. Africa, 1%, which is actually Eastern Africa. Then De Klerk, 100% Europe, 5 Southern, 2% Baltic. Van der Merwe, 99% European, 77% Western European, 2% Southern European, 20% European Jewish, 1% Middle Eastern. This person, Jordan, 100% European, 87% percent Western European, 2 percent Southern, 11 Eastern and 1 percent Eastern of European Jewish. Now let's compare to Europeans DNA from, from Europe. I took this off from the from YouTube uh, just randomly. This Dutch girl, she's Dutch. She did the DNA. She was very surprised because she's 96.4 percent German and 0.6 Finnish and 3% Pakistani. So she was really confused, but Germany is on the border of, of the Netherlands um, and the, the borders in the past were not the same as today. So that borders moved around a lot. So it's possible that she could be 96% German. This girl Anami from, from the Netherlands, she's 88.4% North and West European, 8.2% Balkan, 3.4 Greek and South Italian. And this German woman, she's 100% European, 79.3 North and Western Europe, and 20% Eastern Europe. And then you get this Belgian man, 72% North and West European, 24% British, 1.6% Central African, and 1.5% Melanesian. And lastly, this guy is from Britain, he's 75.7 .7 British and Irish, 9.2 Italian, 8.6 Iberian, 4.2 Middle Eastern, and 2.3 others. And this Amali, Rode, she's 40.9 Scandinavian, Greek 12, Balkan 6, North Africa 24, Nigerian 2.8, Middle Eastern 14%. So her ancestors must... Uh, must have been moved into Europe very uh, shortly in the, in the last few years or last hundred years. This guy, Joan, is 75% Scandinavian, 18 English, 4.3 Ashkenazi Jew, and 2.3% Italian. Why did I show this? Just to show you that the Afrikaner, the Boers, are not different from the people in Europe. So if you say we are mixed, then all the Europeans are mixed. Uh, so that's quite interesting, just to compare with some of the uh, Euro European DNA. So again, um, it's very interesting, the results. Um, I did my DNA quite a few years already ago, I was actually in Europe when I received my results. Yeah, I think it's, it's already seven or eight years ago that I received my results. And it's the first time I share it with uh, a lot of people. It's actually on my Facebook page. Um, and again, it's not your DNA who defines you. Um, it's your character your upbringing, your culture, um, and those things. But still, it's very interesting to know your roots and to know where you come from. And um, if you don't know where you're coming from, how will you know where to go? So that is my thoughts for the day. And enjoy your week and enjoy the rest of the year. And blessings from my side. Bye.